<laughs> You're lucky. Oh, always. Okay. <laughs> Get a countdown today, guys. It was just, are you ready? Okay. You're live. You're live. So what's up, guys? Hey, guys. Look, he got it. Yeah, I got Good it job. popped. Yeah, <clears throat> awesome. It is a beautiful, sunny, lovely spring day here in the Ozarks. We all wish that we were out that door instead of in here in this room, but that's all right. Yeah. We're going to hang out with you for the next hour and a half, and then, and then we, you know, who knows? We might just call it a day. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, thanks for joining us again. I know uh, Wednesday was a bit of a struggle for me, but this today's going to go super smooth. Yeah, we're so going to wrap this thing up. If you guys were here on Wednesday with the with the glue fiasco, Clayton, what did it end up being? Um, so we had picked out uh, some of this natural harness, and obviously I've made this bag before, and I used the same <laughs> adhesive on it, and it just wasn't nearly as oily or waxy as the piece that we have now. I showed you guys last week, there's actually some wax standing on top of the leather. So we tried the same adhesive on some veg tan and it seemed to work fine. So I'm guessing we just got a really waxy piece. And it just pulled it right up and made it real slick. Yeah. 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 So that's a thing. Did just not work at all. Be aware. So today we're going to stick with the Aqualim 315, the Rhenia product. Um, it seemed to do pretty well for us even after trying with <laughs> the Van Grip. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So it turns out our, our batch of glue is all right. Yep, I think Everything so. is fine there. It's good enough it's for what we're using it for. real waxy leather, so, uh, so we're going we're gonna to get going. Yeah, well, Holly wanted us to talk about this super sp oh, yeah. cool spyglass. Holly thinks it's super cool. Oh, so real quick. So <clears throat> on the pattern, guys, um, you can buy the physical copy now. Um, it is on the website. If you go to new items, you can download, or not download, I'm sorry, you can purchase the uh, pattern for the Explorer backpack kit or pattern um the digital will be done when tony gets back from his other job early next week he will zip all those files up however it is that he likes to do things and then that will be ready so just the physical pattern is available for purchase on the website in the new items tab yep and then you can talk about this little free thing right here <laughs> right this is kind of a bonus to the pattern uh, i just thought it was a cool accessory to add onto this bag we had bought this spyglass off Amazon at some point, I mean, years ago. Mm -hmm. But I just thought it'd be cool to make a little case for it and cover the, the end of it with a leather wrap. So we do have a pattern in with this bag for the spyglass case. Obviously, these are made specifically for the size spyglass you get. So it's more the pattern, the physical drawn out pattern is more of a suggestion on there. And the instructions kind of walk you through and tell you how to size it appropriately for the correct diameter of spyglass that you get and how to you know do your french box stitch around the end for your end cap and your baseball stitch for the back um, but it's kind of a nifty little case hey this this angle is um a narrow view is it too narrow? so that's interesting <laughs> all right like it's like old school figured out <laughs> oh Anyways. the narrow screen yeah it's like a it's like a little it for like a different cut. Anyways, that's fun. There you go. Yeah, so that's the little additional spyglass case yeah. information for you guys. Really not a hard project. I mean, you can make a tube for all kinds of round you know, <laughs> cylindrical objects. You, know, you can <laughs> si scale this up for a Q case or, I don't know, scale it down for your chapstick if you're really ambitious. <laughs> Teeny chapstick tube. Yep. Alrighty. So we better get started because we do have a little ways to go. Um, sure do. Wednesday, we got the back panel completely assembled, including an optional interior liner, uh, the handle riveted on, and the back strap tabs sewn in place. So today, we're going to set this aside for a moment until it really starts to come together, and we are going to start assembling the front pocket. So we want to make sure and get our magnets, which are going to act as a closure, sewn onto our front pocket, um, and then start getting our gussets all put together. All right. All right, so first thing we're going to do is make sure we get proper orientation of our magnets. Now, these things, if you get the one-inch square neodymium magnets, they can be kind of dangerous. Lane is really small. excited about that word, and he enjoys saying it. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to make sure we get our orientation correct here. I'm keeping my leather between it so it's easier to hang on to. So that's going to be coming down like so. You guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, so we know that this is going to stick just like that. So then I will take it and I will flip it and make sure I keep the same orientation to where it goes onto my project, right? So let's go ahead and glue this magnet onto the center square. Nice 
nice and quiet it is in here without Tony. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Just kidding, we love you. <laughs> He's watching from his car. He'll be on the chat. <laughs> And you can do that too. Yeah. So just making sure this is going to be glued face down. Oh, that's opposite. There we go. So we want this side that's going to go face down. See how quick it is to get that backwards? <laughs> it's pretty easy to mess it up. That's why I always check a few times. So that's going to go face down. And then this is one of those steps you could use basting tape too if you wanted. We're going to stick with the Rinia. It's been treating us right. Man, the chat is very quiet. Uh, does that mean nobody's watching? No, are we are we on our own today, guys? <laughs> Hi. Guys. <laughs> Make sure that stays on the right. Do we need to talk about the glue again? Might as well. <laughs> I don't know if it's a joke, but it's serious. <laughs> we'll talk about this great glue for this project, Rhenia Aquilim 315, water-based cement, really low to no odor. It's pretty great stuff. All right. One last check. All right, that's going to stick. So that's going to go on our right side of the front pocket. Let's see if we can get this to stick down without adding another layer. Now I had made my reference marks that are on the pattern. Now I think we're going to need to put some glue onto our... Uh, Piece here. Yeah, it's not going to stick quite like I wanted to. So I made some reference marks on the front pocket where the magnet's going to be oriented. I've got a nice outline. Your keyboard's clacking. It's a good thing my keyboard is in nice here. Sound. It would be very loud. That is just such a cute little screen. Just a little cute shot. <laughs> Are you guys going to touch your wife? What? You want the air on? Pro probably. The, the air could be nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you hot for leather? <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Captain. <laughs> Christine, I hope you love your pig, Bundy. We did. They were fun. They're great colors. Dry just a little bit. Would you like an, an air dryer? No. No, no. you're good. This All right. is going to dry in just a second. So while I'm doing this, mm -hmm. Liz, are you confident enough to rough a quarter inch along the inside edge of that outline on the main body back panel? With that big fat ruffer that you've got over there? Yeah. You don't have the little finger ruffer? Mm, I think I've got it so far. Nope. All right, well, I'll do my best. Just use the edge of it. Okay. So what Liz is going to do for us, she is going to rough up the spot where the front pocket gusset's going to actually stick down onto our main body front panel, right? And so on the pattern, there is a dotted line marking the pocket placement. And what you'll do is you'll lay your pattern piece or your cut piece over your front panel and just trace around it so you know exactly where that gusset's going to need to line up. All right. So, I'm so just inside the inside line. Inside the line. And then should I do on top of this line too? Um, no? You shouldn't have to worry about it. Okay. That flap's going to stick down with some basing tape pretty easily. All right. I hate these buffers. Without fail, I will almost always catch my finger somehow. What? Well, like, so, usually I'm using it on, like, the knife sheath, like, the edge of, of something, and it's... Get your finger right there next to it. Josh, you 
Joshua Armstrong was wondering, which we answered this yesterday, can you tool on a split? Yes. If you've got a veg tan split, um, as long as it's like got some thickness to it, you can definitely tool on it. So, and uh, Denny has done a video about tooling rough out, which is the other name for a split. And yes, Dean, it does help to rough up. That's what I'm doing just now. All right. So I got these squares stuck down. If I didn't say before, these little squares that cover the magnets, they're cut at two inch by two inch to cover the one inch square magnets. And they are split down to two to three ounce. And I even bell knived around the uh, edges of them just to kind of help them lay down a little bit flatter. I think they've got stuck well enough. We're gonna try and stitch them. Sorry, I had to move the sewing machine. We're back in focus. That work? Yep. Now, I might need to change my foot again for this. Fantastic. <laughs> what are you going to do at Disney, Liz? What am I going to do at Disney? I'm going to gonna ride the rides, and I'm going to eat delicious cupcakes, because Disney, surprisingly for a theme park, has the most delicious cupcakes I've ever tasted. At least Disney World did. And I assume that Disneyland will probably live up to, to the Disney World hype, I hope. So... Uh, ride rides. We might go to the um, Getty Museum. We've got one extra day before we come back, so we kind of looked up some interesting things to do just in the LA area. And the Getty Museum looks pretty awesome. It's like a huge mansion with some, it was like turned into a museum from this guy's private collection. Yeah, there should be one on YouTube. It's it, it'll either be called Tooling Splits or Rough Out. Holly, do you know which one it is? For Denny's video when he tooled the rough out. Okay, thanks. We had a lot of desserts when we were at Disney. That's pretty much the only thing that we like. We didn't eat like we just brought food to eat at the park because eating food at the park is expensive. Um, but we did eat the dessert. <laughs> You want me to go ahead and put glue there? Yes, ma'am. Let's see if I trust myself to do that. It's going to be great. Mm, looks like I got something catching my attention up here. Let me look for a second. Sorry. Good there. Threading looks good. I might just back that top knob off. I'm not finding anything about that video. Josh, we'll find it and I'll email you. We definitely, we we tooled some splits. I, Tony had remembered, I don't know if Tony's in there. He might remember which video it was that we did it. It may not have been specifically about tooling rough out, but we like just added it in.
How's it going, Clayton? It was pretty good. You got it all fixed up? Yeah, I'm getting it stitched. It's always fun sewing with magnets because they kind of want to move around on you. <laughs> Big old metal machine. Yeah. Is it the same as suede? Mm, mm, no, not, not necessarily. What do you got? Not necessarily. I mean, so a suede is made from a split. So, yes. Uh, but, but. A split hasn't been processed. Correct. So, suede. yeah. Like a suede is a split, but a split necess like wouldn't necessarily be considered suede because suede is a, a type of processed leather that's been finished and it's usually chrome tan. Um, like if you're talking about like the, the Herman Oak veg splits that we offer in the bundles or that we sold yesterday on our live sale, that's that's not suede leather, it's just like a split. It's like a <clears throat> rectangle is not a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Again. <laughs> yeah, that old bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrea Universal is in Florida, and we did that a few years ago when we went to Disneyland, which it was amazing because it's got Harry Potter World, which was phenomenal. And like adult rides. Like Disney's cute and it's got some fun rides, uh, but mostly they're like kid stuff and it's just quaint. Uh, Universal has rides that will scare the crap out of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's good adult terror rides. It's a good time. Not just teacups and Ferris wheels. Exactly. They've got, like, the Hulk one, which I wrote a few times because it was really fun. It, like, spits you out of the test tube thingy and you go <laughs> all around. And it was how that's a good time. How <laughs> well, there's your Universal commercial. <laughs> um, back to the bag. Yeah. We've got, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the gussets now. So I'm going to start with the main body gussets. And so this is the only confusing part if you're trying to go off the written direction solely. Um which at this point you're watching the video and you're not. But this, this is the only thing that's hard to explain or understand. These gussets are some of my favorite gussets. Basically these are cut to match the radius of your bag corners, right? And so a lot of times on rigid body bags, stitching around tight radius corners is really an issue. Uh, if you've got a gusset that is not very, not very wide or not, you know, not very flexible, but this gusset is so simple to get on and keep lined up. I, I love it. It's like one of my favorites. So we're going to go ahead and stitch the bottom onto the sides. So the bottom gusset going onto the side gusset, finish side to finish side, and lining up this edge right here, right? And we're going to go ahead and stitch just across that edge. So between these two goal posts there. I'm going to do about an eighth inch seam allowance. Keep that lined up. Mm, Larry was with that tour bus that came through a week or two ago, and everyone on the bus was super glad to, to come in and get a tour. So that's awesome. We we're glad you guys stopped in, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that tour bus pull up out front. We're like, oh, those poor retail people. <laughs> <laughs> but that, looked, that was pretty cool. Yeah, thanks for dragging the whole tour here, Larry. It's a, we appreciate it. something for everybody it seems even if you're not a crafter you could buy a rock yep or just look at the cool hides or some finished jewelry or a t-shirt yeah let's hear michael ask if would you consider a split if five ounce to be adequate for a bleed knot for a belt uh no i will say no michael just because you really like for a bleed knot because you're putting a pretty decent size like slot into it. I would say if you're working like for a, it really depends on like how much work that knot is going to need to do in the belt. Like if it's decorative, then maybe it'll be fine. But if it's like critical to the structure, I would suggest using a finished leather oh that's gosh. got a grain side on it. This day isn't going as smoothly as possible. You just keep talking, Liz. I, I actually reversed this on this bag. Oh. I did it the other way, so it actually needs to go flesh side to flesh side. Oops. Yep. 
Oh, look, he's going to pull some stitches like he had the whole shop doing this morning. <laughs> right? During Liz's meeting, it really threw her, threw her off. Yeah, apparently I can talk to a camera just fine and assume that all of you guys are looking at me and it's cool. But if I have a room full of people that are staring at their hands and pulling stitches, I can't talk to them because it's awkward and weird and I need them to look at me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I need the, the visual feedback. Yeah, that, that threw me off pretty okay. good this morning in my meeting. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. So uh, just a small mistake. I did this differently on this bag than I have on others. So basically, this actually needs to go flesh side to flesh side. Just reverse it, just like okay. that, because so, it's not going to be turned out. Just line up those holes again. Yep, let me stitch that in. Do you want me to bring this bag over here so you can look at it? <laughs> no, I'm, I got it now. Okay. <laughs> but last time I'm going to mess up, I promise. It's going great, guys, already. It's going to be perfect. What size thread are we using? 207, 138. 207 on the top, 138 in the bobbin, and that's a class 3. We chose the class three instead of the 26 because you do have like sewing up the handle, uh, sewing the binding around the edge through all these layers, especially because this is a pretty firm leather. Um, it's just gonna be a lot happier with a class three than it would be with a 26. You could probably do it, but you might get to some parts where you struggle a little bit. So if you're watching the video and making this bag, just know, flesh side to flesh side. You can take a look at the finished one, but you'll see once we get this thing put together, your gussets are gonna come together oh. really nicely like this, right on the edge of the bag. There we go. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. There we go. And just stitch in that one little spot. Now we're rocking. Yeah, Terry, so far the Aqualum seems to be doing great with this particular leather. Not the Van Grip. We are not using Van Grip today. We left the Van Grip in the shop. main body gusset assembly and we're going to go, go ahead and do the same thing for our front pocket gusset since it's the same process. I just want to see if we can get some of that glue off from, from around those magnets. Yeah. So same thing for the front pocket, they're just skinnier pieces. We're going to match these up, uh, flesh side to flesh side, almost did it again. <laughs> match them up and then we're going to stitch right, right there. Did you say 207 on the thread? Yep. Yeah, we're using 207 on the top and 138 on the bobbin. Isn't this the cutest little gusset you ever did see? Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be tiny. That's gonna be tiny. I want to put the two stitches in the middle of it. Just two. Blue issue on Wednesday, we can blame Tony for apparently that's what people are saying. <laughs> He's not here to argue, is he? With being Terry Beeson. I think that's just Terry Beeson. It is. Oh. That's just Terry Beeson. Nick, jeez. Tony would know. Nick doesn't. <laughs> Says good morning. Good morning, Brenda. That's fine. And <laughs> quick. Just if everybody out there with their live shopping estimates, it's just me putting them in this week. So I've got like a handful done this morning between meetings and things and getting ready for this. And I will keep putting them in for a little while this afternoon. And then if I don't get finished, I will continue putting them in at home tonight when I get home. So, you know, just keep on the lookout for those emails, but they will all get in today. So 
What are you using to get the excess glue off? I'm using a glue eraser. Uh, that's what we call it. We sell it. We call it a glue eraser. What kind? What? what? Is it? What? This is um. It's used to get grit off of like. Uh, clean the grit off your sandpaper. So you buy it in sheets, and then it's yeah. used to clean off uh, drum sanders. Yes, that. Yep. So it's just a a glue eraser. You can probably type that into the website. I hope, and you'll come up with something. Yep. First time viewer on Twitch. Ooh. Nice. Welcome. Says something about Argentina. Wow. So I don't know if that's accurate or not. Can you read the rest of it? Is it in is it in this language? No. Okay. <laughs> that's why I said So that. there you go. <laughs> Portuguese, I guess. I can put it yeah, out probably. there. You could try to pronunciate it if that's a thing. Uh, I'm assuming that's hello Hi, from Argentina. Argentina. That's but I'm not going to try to say it right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. all right. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to do my best to get a nice skinny line of adhesive all the way around the three edges of our front pocket, and we're going to stick down our front pocket gusset. He's a knife maker. Nice. I'm in Argentina. Nice. Look at his channel, he's got some stuff. What was his name? Um, uh, <laughs> what is it, Holly? Cuchillos. Cuchillos. Like I said, I'm not going to try, but I just don't butcher it. I know, I get, I know a handful yeah. of knife makers from Brazil, but I don't, I'm not recalling any that I, I know from Argentina. He's laughing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the jaws. The jaws. <laughs> it's the jaws. It's cool. I guess I could have maybe glued that. Would have been better to do than this. <laughs> no, that'll come. So you always want to be careful when gluing on gussets like this. You don't want to have any end up with a bunch of adhesive in your seams or looking down into your pocket showing, seeing a bunch of the adhesive still there. So I'm trying to be careful to keep it a pretty skinny line, but still move us along, hopefully. That's the other thing that would have been really cool to go with this uh, this bag would be like a binoculars. binoculars case. Yeah. That would be cool. This, I feel like I could be an owl with this. That would be something, pattern we work on for late fall, early summer, early fall. Sounds like a good product. You go bird watching. Yeah. My sister really likes to watch her birds out on her little acreage in Republic and and uh, she has an app that she can like record the sound that it makes and it will help her identify the birds which is kind nice. of fun yeah. yeah that's cool um Dean had a question why not make the gusset one long piece is that a stylistic thing or is there a different reason um so I think that's what he's kind of talking about earlier yeah, I haven't tried this style of gusset as one long piece. I think you probably could you do it? No, because I mean with this spe specific style of gusset, you're not going to have the leather. Um, it would have to be cut out from this section over here, and so you'd end up having a gap in your gusset. It does look pretty cool though, like when the bag is finished to have instead of having like you get a little bit more structure here, and you've got that seam. So it's a nice little visual. I'm getting glue all over Tony's tape. Yes. Well, I brought the paper, but then you didn't use it. So, you know. Exactly. Yeah. We'll do both. Oh, it's here. <laughs> Salvador said, if split leather is processed and suede is processed, the only difference between the leathers is the fiber structure. If split leather is processed and suede is processed, I mean, you have to define the processing on split leather. But yeah, I mean, I guess it can be the only difference is the fiber structure. Also depends on the suede. 
Mm -hmm. You can get veg tan, you can suede veg tan. So basically buff the top grain and kind of give it a suede finish. Not the top grain, the split, I'm sorry, buff the split. Uh, but then a lot of your actual suede that you purchase as suede are, are chrome tans. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, that would be like our suede double butts that we sell or like our printed suede that we sell. Those are a chrome tan leather. You can't stamp and tool on them like you can, like the veg splits that we get off of our splitting machines when we take thick permanoke and make it thin. So Ron says, howdy, howdy right back. Christina says that I'm so dedicated. Thanks, Christina. She is quite dedicated. <laughs> I mean, I've been here for a long time, so I feel like I have some dedication <laughs> happening. <laughs> All right, so this is what's cool about these gussets. These corners right here are normally hard to, they're kind of hard to form. If you do one piece, one long strip, it's hard to make it around these corners, right? Because you got to stretch your leather and really train it the right way. Yeah, so let's show them like how that laid. Yeah. So. Those corners will just match right up. Like, look how nice that is. There's yeah. no fighting it. Gives you space right here for your sewing machine to walk around and mm -hmm. stitch. Yeah. So that's why he does the gussets in the three pieces instead of one. Correct. How's the back of my head looking today? Uh, it's got a little salty. It's, it's a little salty. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. You have so many, I mean, you're younger than me, but you have way more gray hairs than I do. Actually, I don't yeah. think that I've sure. gotten one yet. Sure. <laughs> I'm trying to keep back your head out of it. It's a little hard to do. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> All right, Sorry. so at this point, we're ready to go ahead and stitch. If you had trouble lining these up and your edges aren't very flush, then I would recommend going through and either trimming the edges flush with a knife or even going to your, your finisher using some sandpaper and sanding it flush. We're good enough here. I think we're going to go ahead and try and stitch around it. Yeah, ideally, we would finish this edge before we sew it and put it on the bag, but we don't have a finisher in here because they're very messy. Um, and it's not good for cameras and computers. Right. So the finisher does not get to come into this room. Though Clayton threatened to bring the, what is that little thing called? Our, what, our uh, Sutton finisher? Our little Sutton, yeah, finisher. I said no. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> People like to guess if Clayton did you. Thank you. This is my favorite part of this whole bag. I really like that guess too. Please start a leg right here. That's it. That's the whole reason to buy this pattern, is to learn how to do that custom. <laughs> do you want me to rough up the edge of the leather all the way around so that we can glue the gusset to the bag? Should I do that? Here. Oh, yeah. Okay. We will need to do that. Okay, I can do that. And we're also going to need to rough up the edge a half inch and all the way to the exterior. On the back. back. Christina said the gusset sold her on the pattern. Right? Yeah. I know it's driving me crazy. You guys, pardon the fly if it comes through the video. We're not excited about it. All right. Yeah, overhead if you would, Nick. So look at that. Look how easy that was. We stitched right around that corner, and then the gusset laid down so nicely. That just, that makes me happy. Look at that front pocket. What a cute little pocket. It's cute. It's cute. It's cute. It's cute. It's adorable. My gosh, it's so cute. Everything is cute, Clayton. Boy, shoes, mom. Hmm? Nothing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and train this leather out because um, it is going to fold outwards and glue down around this beautifully, just so, such a precise roughed up line with just even nice quarter inch strip of glue around it. This is going to be, wow. I'm not sure if that's sarcasm or not. Yeah, I don't know. You're a little outside the lines here. Well, that's okay, because wow. it'll erase. Okay. It's oily. Right, it's sure. cool. So before we stick this pocket down, we should go ahead and stitch this flap. So let's grab some basting tape. It'll be easier for this one. We don't, need to, we don't quite need the sticking power of the adhesive on this part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've only got quarter inch basting tape, and I really don't want a full quarter inch on it. So I'm going to lay it about halfway off, and we're just going to fold it over. Is that because you stole our 8th inch basing tape? I stole tape? all of the 8th inch basing tape. Our sewing room uses it for like a bunch of our interiors, and we ran out. So I went pillaging across the store to for 8th inch basing tape. making a nice decorative line as you sew. Will you work that out later? Um, yeah, the harness, it does have a bit of a line to it. Um, once I go back, once the bag is finished, I'll saddle soap it. And once you start to rub that down, it'll disappear pretty quickly. So, I mean, I had the same thing going down the main body where you see I did the decorative stitch. And, and there's, it's, it's there's pretty well seat. worked out. Yeah. So but very, also, sometimes that's just a sacrifice that you have when you machine sew versus hand right. sew. We'll work it out, but also get over it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it just, it happens. Most leathers, you can get it uh, rubbed back out. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I get this nice and centered with our pocket outline and follow the top line that's indicated on the pattern to so align the flap. And then we're gonna stitch across. Oh, pull away the, there for a second guys so here's a quick tip in case you guys are wondering if you ever pick up your presser foot whenever your needles not in your leather and it just moves around a little bit and you're not sure if you're gonna get the right stitch length just go back to the last hole you made and just run that needle through that hole again and just double your stitch right there it's not gonna hurt anything moved a little bit. Maybe I should have glued it down. It's a little disappointing. Am I going to need to fix that in this? Or can we just fold it to where it's... You'll it never tell. Right. You'll never be able to tell. <clears throat> yeah, so my tape just pushed off a little bit. I think I had the leather angled a bit to where that foot was kind of putting a little bit too much pressure to the left. So... We're going to trim our threads and burn it and carry on like nothing ever happened. Nobody will ever know. You really can't tell. Okay. So we've got our flap down. Let's see when we don't have any 
tape showing inside there. That's nice. That's the one thing about gluing it as well. If you get too sloppy, you'll see a bunch of glue in there. That's, that's not happy or cute. Got our gusset trained out. We're going to go ahead and spread some glue. Or contact cement, I should say. Could you call it adhesive? Could call it adhesive. That's a good catch all there. Let's see here. Salvador said classes of leather are full grain, top grain, split, genuine, then bonded. Um, I'm not really sure where the genuine falls in because all of them could be considered genuine leather. Um, and then you do have corrected grain. That's another one that you could add. So like a lot of times upholstery leathers will be corrected grain where they've sanded off a lot of the like heavy blemishes, but you still have grain um, and then it's refinished. So that's a corrected grain. Was a plated grain considered a corrected grain? I don't know. I, you can plate like full grain leathers, but then you could definitely plate corrected grain leathers as well. Corrected grain is really whenever they're actually removing some of the top grain. Yes. Good to know. And then also, I, I feel like top grain and corrected grain, depending on the leather that you're looking at, you could pro you could probably categorize those two similarly. That's true because you can have like a corrected top grain, but if you want full grain leather, yeah, if you want the cow in all its beauty. Get you some full grain bovine. So like this leather here, you can see it's got a lot of character. You can see where it had bug bites, um, a lot of fat wrinkles. Mm -hmm. This would be a full grain. Yeah, and then there's also differences between, I think, like an aniline finished is typically like when you can see the grain through, and then a pigmented finish is like a painted, just a straight cover to where you can no longer really see the characteristics of the leather because of the pigment finish on top. Yeah, it's not really leather anymore, in my opinion. <laughs> if you're on Twitch, you can see our new emos that we have done. Oh, yeah. We do have, oh, I didn't bring Luna treats, though, guys, so we can't. I forgot about that. I need to put a bowl in here with treats. I, yeah, don't. I have treats in our office, but just not in here. There is a Tony tube, but then Nick would have to do it. So. A what? Oh, the, the Tony, Tony tube? tube? It's got SLC yellow tape on it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think Nick is going to be super excited if he has to try to talk through a tube. I'll do it, Nick. <laughs> that is a really big fly. It's right there. <laughs> Hi, yeah, he's had a good life. I'll ask my next question. Okay. Come here. All right, I think the glue should be ready to go ahead and see if we can stick this down. Again, I use cement on this as opposed to basting tape. You might be able to get away with basting tape, but really the cement's gonna stick much better and you don't want this to move around a whole lot like my flap did whenever you're, um, whenever you're stitching around it. So, we want to look at our line, make sure we've got something clear to follow. Quick question. Oh! It's uh, about glue. Uh, <laughs> you mean adhesive? Are most of the white water based adhesives basically Elmer School glue? No. <laughs> All right. No. Was that your own personal question? or nope, that was on there. Somebody asked that. Okay. That no. No, it's not basically Elmer's glue. These are, these are much different. So this isn't actually considered a glue in the tradition in the it's by definition cement. it's a contact cement mm -hmm. right so it's it, it's a little bit different with a glue you type, typically you'll apply it uh, to one side of your project and you'll actually put the two layers together like wood glue and you'll clamp it and let it cure with contact cement uh, once they stick together they are stuck on contact so you don't have to clamp it yeah, typically they, like you apply it to both sides. There's a waiting period for the glue to kind of soak into whatever product you put it in. And then when you put it together, the glue sticks to the glue. And that's why it's contact cement. Um, I wanted to put a quick note in here. Somebody says that they believe the leather crafting 
world is like starting to die off and I don't think it's dying off I think it's just evolving into something new something a little bit I just feel like there's quite a bit of like resurgence in like it's not just saddle and tack and leather for like strict needs old cowboys yeah it's a there's a lot more creativity happening right now in the leather world with different things yeah this looks fun Clayton. we're still here we're not dying yeah. that's right we're doing great that's nice Silver hair. Uh, we're looking at the front of you, so it's it's good. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. no. This is fun. I really wish I could have finished the edges of this pocket with a finisher. Well, that was not on the bag, but whatever. Yeah. That's okay, Liz. I could have, I could have helped you out with that. I'm a good runner. I could sand things off camera. Dean, no, we will not be making a, a kit for this. This is going to be a pattern only. Typically, we. I mean, I guess it's not a strict rule, but we like to like kits to be pre-punched. That way, they're a little bit more user friendly. Obviously, we do have some that are not pre-punched, but uh, I think it'd actually be really hard to get a die that did that. The, this would be pushing the limits of our clicker press. <laughs> uh, would, yeah, I mean, pretty, we could do it. We could do it, but our clicker press beds are thirty-nine and a half by nineteen and a half. So we could do it, but, but no. no, yeah, yeah, cut your own parts. Andrea, what projects are next week? So next Wednesday, um, Clayton will be here with our newest R and D member, Ryan, doing something. Yep. Yep. I so guess will. you guys will get to meet Ryan and have a great time uh, with Clayton and Ryan doing something. Kevin was all ready to go. He yeah, came he in was. with his tools today, and he's like, "Am I supposed to be here?" Yeah, I told him yesterday that it was next week. I was trying to give him a little bit of a heads supposed up. Supposed to be here. And then on Friday, it is our obligatory uh, trading card day with Denny and Kevin. They will have to figure out how to be friends on their own because I will not be here for a buffer. Um, so you'll get to watch Denny and Kevin. I'm. I tried to give Kevin to tool a morel mushroom. We'll see if he does it. I hope that he does. He should. I know. He it's loves in it. season. And it's in season. Guys, anybody locals watching, now is the time. Go find your morels. All right. So this is going to be a little bit trickier on this side. Um, you got to kind of twist this pocket up a little bit. It'll work out. It's fine. But we have to make a little bit of room to get our sewing machine around this gusset. So let's see how we do. Hopefully that's going to be stuck well enough. It's not going to slide and move around on us too much. All right. Michael, our, our phones are definitely up for taking orders. Um, we, Clayton and I, and the people in this room are not responsible for answering the phones here at SLC. So that whole crew is still over in the office. Um, they're a couple rooms away. So, yep, they are there if you need to, to make a phone call. I don't know how much of this you guys are going to see because it's going to be hidden behind this pocket. But... Ooh. Good Fork just got the mason jar kit, and he loves the packaging. Or they love... Oh, Good yeah. Fork. Who are... Do you remember who they are? I, you told us the other day, and I, you're one of our live people, and I have forgotten. Yeah. Actually, Clayton, and, did, did we do that? The packaging on the mason jar? Did, did we do that? I think we did. Yeah, we can take credit. Yeah, we can. But if we didn't, If then, we didn't, then whoever did is no longer here. Exactly. So, so that was totally us. Yeah. I think that that was us. If it wasn't actually us, we had something to do with it. Yeah. Maybe, uh... Yes. Yes. So she's a live shopper. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. Cynthia. On Twitch, we can't see what... Who it really is. Yeah. That is a good shot. Yeah. Holly got that camera just right. Oh yeah, that one. I, we, we've had a struggle. <laughs> it's it's perfect. I feel like if that was a regular gusset, it would just be really terrible right now. I mean, there, yeah, there would almost be no way to get around these corners with this uh, narrow of a gusset if it was all one piece. Yeah. Unless it was a very, very soft, stretchy leather.
gosh, we typically don't recommend. People use wood glue for leather work a lot, um, but it dries really stiff. Um, it does not have a lot of give. It's not ideal. Like, if you have to use it, then sure, try it out, but we don't, we don't typically recommend to use wood glue. All right, that guy is on there. Look at that. We've got one pocket assembled. Oh, hum. We had a little, a little uh, mess up on a project in the shop this morning, so we had a thread pulling competition this morning, and then just a regular old thread pulling hoedown with the whole shop. Did you get it all done? Yeah. But I gotta say, I I am the best at pulling threads. Yeah. I won the competition this morning. Have you have you had to pull a lot of like conceal and carry belts? <clears throat> yeah. In your past? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I pulled a lot of thread out. <laughs> it's a good lesson, but I've gotten very fast at it. Every four stitches, pull your top. Yeah. And do every four, five, six stitches, you know, and just cut your back all the way around, just keep going, and then grab your top thread and just yank it out. And pick out all the little pieces. Okay, look at that. So now we get to do another gusset. That guy right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread adhesive around this guy. Randy Myers still wants you to duct tape a GoPro to your forehead queen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You have to use duct tape? So the problem yeah, is that our little switchboard is only big enough for four cameras. Otherwise, we have to get a bigger switchboard um, and different things. And I, d I don't. I brought it up a few times, um, and Tony's like, mmm. I figured Tony would be down for more gear. <laughs> well, I guess his little spot is only so big. <laughs> Maybe like a GoPro on the chest, like a chest mount. That would probably be the best. We did buy a little uh, dog harness because Ed did buy a GoPro and then we, we wanted to put one on the, the little chihuahuas that used to run around here yeah. um, and get, like, the chihuahua perspective of SLC, which <laughs> would have been a lot of fun. But I bet it'd be, you know, extremely shaky. Yeah. <laughs> Probably make you sick. So you put it on a little potato back there, man. We, we could try a potato. He's probably sturdy enough. We wanted to use Bubby, but I don't know if Kydex. he'd be sturdy enough to support. Oh, yeah, he'd be sturdy. <laughs> Kydex would be fine. Kydex. Put any, he might put some more weight on that dog, though, and his little legs will collapse. <laughs> He collapses regularly anyways. So <laughs> Is it have has he been on camera? We we brought him in for the Twitch after party on oh Wednesday. My God. So you guys for those of you that joined the Twitch after party, we had a dog sharing escapade in here. It was a lot of fun. This dog. And he like I always say he looks like someone dropped like a considerably sized meatloaf in a barbershop. <laughs> shop. <laughs> <laughs> he he's just so round and hairy. For that. That's hilarious. <laughs> all right, there's your gusset. I made it all twirly for you. Perfect. That's gonna help out a lot. <laughs> I figured it would. It should lay back down. Okay. Oh jeez, I'm gonna sit down. It's almost Saturday. It's almost Saturday. You'll just be sitting in a canoe for all day tomorrow, I assume. Maybe. I haven't decided where to go yet. I don't know if we're floating or if we're going to hit a creek and go trout fishing or what. But you want canoes or kayaks there? Depends on who I'm with and what I'm doing. Yeah. If I got the small children with me, I'll take the canoe so you can control them. <laughs> and they don't get into predicaments in a kayak on their own. If it's like just me and my older one, we'll just take the kayaks. That way we can, we can get away from each other. <laughs> you don't have to worry about them trying to hook you. Yeah. If I'm like doing overnight trip, then it's the canoe with the gear. Clayton has all the all the possibilities. Yep. He's ready for every fishing water-based excursion. How are we doing on time? Got all the time in the world. We've been at this for an hour. Oh, we're so close. 
we can finish this. I so when you're done with that, I guess you just want me to start applying glue to the strips. The binding strips, yeah. Okay. And we're gonna the binding strips, and then the ex, well, don't do it to the whole exterior of that main body yet. I already did. Adhesive? Oh no, no. Okay. Just I roughed it. And then the front does not get bound, so we're good there. I don't need to rough up the front. Okay. <clears throat> but you could bind the front if you wanted to. Yeah. You're just a just a binding fool, you know. Just... All right. We're kind of specifically binding the back edge and the front because of the the fabric esque lining. And I could probably get away with spreading some adhesive on this side as well. I will use my paper and I glue these. work in the camera, that'd be cool. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Franklin Anderson finally caught alive. Howdy from Idaho. Well, welcome. Idaho. Still. It's probably still pretty cold up there, maybe. I don't know. Northern Idaho stayed pretty cold. Zero is rebuilding his truck tomorrow, so. That sounds like fun. Joshua P O C H E. P-O-C-H-E, Posh. Yeah, I used to be really good at that one, yeah. Josh. P-O-C-H. He has an uh, AC unit gives him problems, but he's got to go. He's been here the whole time it is. Nice. Bye, Josh. Yeah, one of these warm days I need to not go fishing and work on my boat. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a really hard life. Nick is trying to get you glue in any way he can, but it's a struggle. <laughs> chase me. I want you to chase me. You know, yeah, just... sorry guys for the... What? Oh, the camera just doesn't want to stay focused. But it's also like the cute little mini screen, so... It's your fault. I'm not in the shot at all. Your show. <laughs> this little spatula is nice for some things, but I'm not really getting along with it right now. I want my brush back. Okay. That's 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 nice. Okay. Give it here. <sighs> Thank you. Is that there's a squeeze bottle yeah. if you want that? I do. I'll show these people how it's done. I think you're, uh, you got the concealing, the belt technique down? I've never made a concealing carry in my life. Oh my God. But I watched Jim that me? one day. Are you and kidding me? You've been here for a decade and you haven't made a concealing carry belt? No. I just got to watch all of you guys make them. I did make a lot of totes. It definitely helped in that, but we were never quite desperate in the shop, like enough to where we needed extra help on concealing carries. Mm, from that's back when I was making them. Mm -hmm. That's why we... Yeah, you got you always got it done. Yep. That's probably why I stayed out of the shop too. <laughs> All right, let's line this gusset up here. So I'm gonna try and get this as flush as possible since we don't have a finisher in here to sand the edges. All right, Clay. We're just down. gonna do a good job. Randy, do you mean you want us to have like an evening show? Because we like to go home. Sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> be the consequence of that is you, you 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> we love you guys a lot, but we also want to go home to our animals. And That's true. You're going to have to start like paying us a lot more. Yeah, right now. Yeah. So That's a, you know. <laughs> Listen, my dog is a special kind of animal, and, and she is the most nervous creature that you have ever met. She will attack anybody. Um, she won't attack but, me. But from behind my legs. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I think I told this story earlier. So this, this past week when I was out at my sister's, she... Uh, got into some sort of poop something situation and I didn't realize it because it was dark when I left and and I didn't see her before we like really got in the car and like we were almost home and she's standing up on the console and I go to like scratch her little neck you know and I just get covered in whatever it was that she had found to roll in so we go home and I put her in the shower to give her a bath and like removing her collar is like the most traumatic thing this dog can experience ever (laughs) Anytime I need to take her collar off, she thinks that I'm, like, abandoning her for life. Um, And then she runs and she hides with Chris for the next three hours because I have just ruined everything. So she doesn't do well with things being put on her or taken off of her. Or if you try to pick her up, she will pee everywhere, as Clayton experienced. (laughs) (laughs) She is a weird dog. She is a weird dog. She's great. I love her, but... She is a whole little thing. All right, so we got our gusset put on just like we did the front pocket. I had to trim a little bit off one of the corners, didn't quite line up, but that's fine. That's okay. Still a happy, happy gusset. Is it a happy gusset? A happy, Bob happy Ross? gusset. Happy, happy little tree. There's a roller guide on this one. Gabby's still waiting on the Lego. Liz, Twitch, Oh, yep, you and everybody else. <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> I have Salvador cameras. He has an SLC question. If you were to be any animal, what would you be? Yeah, I feel like that's the obligatory answer from any SLC employee. Probably. But hopefully a dog that lives longer than like 12 to 15 years. An eagle. An eagle? To fly in my Mm-hmm. Just a bird of prey. Yeah, I could, I could probably be a hawk. Yeah. I'd be I'd be pretty okay if like I was a hawk. From... <laughs> uh, oh, the goose from Balto, Boris. He wanted to be an eagle. Boris. Okay. Nobody would want to eat you. What was yours, Liz? I, I, I've been really enjoying my hawk watching the last few years. Kind of fun, like a sea turtle. Yeah, like the monster. Something. They live for a really long time. Yeah. They do. They're slow. Actually, most of them don't survive. I don't think they get eaten by birds on their way to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Babies. <laughs> So I think if you average their lifespan, it's not very good. <laughs> Or you just wash up on a beach and slowly suffocate and die, dry out. All right. I mean, they move around. Just saying, it's yeah. not, not all it's cracked up to be. I mean, no animal in the wild has like a perfectly safe life. 
wolf would be cool. Mm, yeah. Or like a like a lynx or something. A black panther. <laughs> Specifically. Specifically black panther. All right. Done with the gusset. We're ready to stick our front pocket, front panel assembly onto our main body. Um, we're going to stick this down the best we can because we're going to try to bind the edges afterwards. So I've already got adhesive spread on that side of the gusset. Let's do that back. We're going to have to, my paper kind of stuck with my adhesive. <laughs> I am going to use my pattern for the front main body panel to mark where my gusset's going to end on each side. That way I know where how far to glue up. I don't have my silver pen, but we'll just... There should be one behind you. Mark the back of it. See if that's that. Right there and right there. It's a really random song that stuck in your head. Very random. Very old song. I think it's pretty old. Riding says hi all the way from Washington. Hello. Washington 42 State? Degrees. It's 42 degrees apparently in North Idaho. North Idaho? That's, that's like pretty much where you're from, right, Chad? <laughs> the other eye. <laughs> I, Iowa, Idaho, Iowa. Iowa. That's like the same place, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> Luna, what's up? People from everywhere today. Florida, California, South Carolina, Wayne. We were looking at uh, demo nims yesterday. Have you guys heard of that? What? What? Demo nims. It's been, we were looking up Hoosier, what a Hoosier was, and it's a demo name for Indiana, which is basically what they call the person who lives oh. in that state. A demographic name? Yeah. Okay. Demo name. <laughs> demo name. What's, what's our demo name? Uh, Missouri. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're boring. Uh, but, like, Nebraska yeah. has two, which is basically corn, corn huskers or bug eater. Bug eater. Yeah. Bug eater. That was an interesting one. There was another one called Uber Grabber. <laughs> <laughs> Who are, where are they from? Uh, I think it's either Idaho or Montana. Do you, you guys know what a goober is? A nut. It's a peanut, yeah. So, you know, watch your nuts out there. <laughs> so, and anyway, it's Look out for them goober grabbers. <laughs> 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 uh. It was very interesting, I thought. <laughs> I, yeah. Thanks. For I was a Hawkeye. That's, that's the demo name for Iowa. That's so cool. We could live in Missouri. Why is Missouri so boring? Yeah. Could at least be like the Ozarkians or something. The hillbillies. No, let's not no. do that. Or the showbies. The showbies? <laughs> I've never liked that. The showbies like, state. What are we talking about? Because we brought up Nebraska. Mm. Why, why did the show me state have to be the show me state? It's like we're the most tr mistrustful people. Wow. Right, I'm not really sure what happened with my paper, but apparently using just like regular paper is not ideal for gluing because it all came off. But with some saddle soap, all will be well. Uh, Chad, what's the price on the physical pattern? Uh, and for anybody? Uh, let's just set it over here. Uh, Eleven retail, nine wholesale. Eleven dollars retail, nine dollars wholesale. What? That's so cheap. It's the same as the other backpack that we have. What? 
This one's uh, way better. Nick, I can't answer. Answer my Which question. Other back? I don't remember. Oh, Voyager backpack. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> do you all ever find yourselves doing things like quilting with all, all the sewing you do? Quilting sure does. <laughs> yeah, I'll do some quilting stitch patterns. Um, the so. briefcase bag that we did a couple months ago, we quilted the panels on it. We did. We sure did. Or, yeah. That turned out pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Quilting can be fun. Is your glue drying? It's, yeah, slowly. Still, I put a little bit much on, so I'm going to have to wait for it to dry. Just a blank is a, it's a glue and paper. All right, let's stick this down. I'm actually going to start down here at the corner. And get it nice and lined up where I want it. picked up a couple tools along the way. That's a good way to scratch your bag. <laughs> well, hi, Lynn. SLC question. Any updates on Kevin's exotic bundles? Uh, are, are we out of them? Is that a... So our exotics kind of like our exotic offerings kind of come and go depending on what current miscellaneous lots of exotics we have at the time. Um, so I'm not specifically sure which exotic bundle you're referring to, but it could be that we um, like ran out of the inventory to make it because we just buy like big lots of kind of miscellaneous exotic pieces from boot manufacturers usually. So if it's not available, that means that we may never have it again if we never get the stuff to build it or we'll come up with a different and new exotic pack. Uh, we tend to have just like a lot of different exotic options. If you go to that link on our website, Ooh, to the exotics nice. listing, you see kind of what our current selection of exotics is. And then always know that you can call in and ask what we have because a lot of times we just have kind of like miscellaneous skins on retail that we've only got a couple of or just one of. Um, so there's not something that we can list on the website. But we got a lot of stuff. Didn't we get a lot more Herman Oak in? We have a lot of Herman Oak right now. So people asking about that. Um, we are uh, out of black collar again, and it just came in, but we're out of it. And I have another order in. And Roar said see, that there's a rush on it. You see this look of despair? <laughs> black collar is the bane of my existence. <laughs> like, literally, I. I can't seem to get it any I can't, faster. And yeah, and we just can't seem to order enough when we do. Anyways, so that's what that is. But otherwise, if you're looking for Herman Oak veg leather, um, I know we are out of some of the skirting options right now in Herman Oak, but for, for most, all thicknesses of B and D grade, we can get you taken care of. We do have some... Um, economy plus right now but that's probably going to be going pretty quickly and then we will be out again until they generate another pallet of economy pluses so that just comes as Herman Oak 
um, has leather that is not up to par. So we don't order it. Like, that's not something that we can order. It's something that they generate as they tan and will build a pallet for us. And then they let us know. Uh, so once that is gone, which probably by the next week, that's going to be gone. Like, that usually goes pretty fast at, like, 120 or whatever it is aside, 130. Um, but we have B and D grade. We did just get a shipment of A grade in. So if you need some A grade, now's the time to order that. And uh, we have some AB branded coming in that we'll have listed or it's already here. And I think that's what we've got. Wayne, SLC dude and dude Etz, if you would please give Andy with the beard, no, Andrew. A big thank you for helping me with a problem that I had on some red edge coat. Will do, Wayne. We will pass that along to Andrew. We do have an Andy here, which is why I'm being specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One goes by Andrew. The other goes by Andy. This camera is driving me crazy. All right. So we got our gusset glued down. Hopefully it's going to stay well enough for us to get our binding strip on all nice and neat. And, um, hey, this is the last. Well, the, put the straps on but. pretty much, yeah. All uh, right, so we already got adhesive spread on our binding strips. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna rough up the inside of our uh gusset and the leather on their gusset, mm -hmm. and then same thing. As you already got some of it roughed up here, mm -hmm. and then I need some wing dividers. We have some back here, okay? All right, uh, there it is. they had the name correct and it was Andy he corrected me but I said that he didn't have a good enough beard for me to consider him the Andy with the beard he doesn't have a beard he has scruff <laughs> he doesn't have a beard <laughs> Andy right. with the close trimmed facial hair hi Loons So, mm. oh, I do need to mark my line all the way around. Chad, do we have pricing on the AB branded? I, I don't know, Chevy. We'll hang on. We should have some pricing in there. I think we've gotten it in a few times, but typically when we get it in, we are so low on leather that we actually usually just cut it up in the shop and uh, maybe send it out for some B grades or B grade leather if we need to. So I don't think we've actually attempted to sell it yet, but we will look to see if we've got pricing. Alright, so I'm going to set my wing dividers at a half inch and we're going to mark a line all the way around. That is going to be the line that we will follow our edge. This line is actually set just under a half inch so that we can cover it up with our edge binding. I was real worried that this had gotten away from me right here, but I think we'll be okay. No, you're good. You're okay. Good. We do a pretty wide binding on this. Whew. Yes, Christina, that's what we mentioned here just a, a minute ago. You could bind the front panel if you wanted to as well. We specifically bind this back one mostly because of the, the fabric here on the side it doesn't look very good in the edge and you can't really finish it. So you bind it to cover all that up and then all these pieces as well. Um, but yeah, if you, like Clayton said, if you're ambitious and you just want to do a bunch of binding, yeah, feel free. Absolutely. All right. So... Let's get some adhesive on this. We're going to do the inside first. 
actually, you know what? Let's do one at a side at a time. Let's do our outside. We'll lay our binding down all the way around, get it stuck, and then we'll flip it over, apply adhesive, and stick again. Cool. It is cool. Cool and good. Yeah, pretty okay. cute. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> you notice. Second <laughs> So this is one step you don't want to mess around with not gluing it well enough. Um, with the edge binding, if you want it to look nice and turn out well, you want to get it stuck down really good. You get like a hair that keeps following you around. It's driving me crazy. Thank you. I'm glue the paper towel in my hands. Good glue. Yep, this stuff is made to spread very thin, so you don't want a bunch of it on there. Let's go back over here. What's your favorite Disney character, Liz? Oh, I don't have one really. <laughs> <laughs> um, Should be an easy one. Herbie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do love the Love Bug movies. Those are as soon as like Disney Plus came out, and I and I, you know, acquired that subscription obligatorily. I. Totally. Although, I guess Disney now owns Marvel, so, you know, if you've got a favorite superhero, that's also considered a Disney or character. At this, yep, or Star Wars. Really, you know, just anything that you've ever watched is owned by Disney, so they're all Disney characters. I was thinking more like a traditional... Like Pocahontas? You know, Saturday morning cartoon, or like a... Like Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. Kind right, of. yeah. Pluto, you know, probably see Pluto. I like Pluto a lot. Pluto's fun. I enjoy the differences between Pluto and Goofy. Yeah. They're both dogs. It's really confusing. <laughs> I, uh... But that's enough about that. So what's your favorite Disney character, Clayton? Oh, probably Pluto. Yeah. No, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> I mean, Eeyore is pretty great. Yeah. Like, yeah. I do enjoy. <laughs> no, I feel like winter time. Eeyore content. Yeah. Uh, I like Big Mama, you know? The owl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I definitely behave way more like a Tigger than an Eeyore, though, so it's a, it, you know, it's a nice contrast. Calms me down a little bit. <laughs> You're off camera. Sorry, guys. I mean, he is off camera. Yeah. Burn, Chad. <laughs> We're just gluing, guys, still. Just gluing. Just lots of gluing. Cool. You're not going to get the. Hmm? Like the edge, too, hmm? while you're at it. Mm -mm. You're going to wait. Mm -mm. This is going to be a bit of gluing for the next few minutes. Bear with us, Liz, if you need to go. Oh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. All right, so we're going to start off with my longer strip, and I'm going to try and go. Let's see. Let's see how far we can make it. As Liz mentioned, we should definitely get our binding strip seams, since we have to do it in two pieces, even all the way around. That was as I was editing the instructions yesterday, that was one of my like three additional comments that I made was, hey, remind people if they don't have 82 inches of binding to do one continuous strip, 
Which if you do, that's awesome. But like this this leather wouldn't yield an 82 inch strip. No. Because it's a double shoulder or a double butt or whichever side you get. Unless you cut it in a big curve. Yeah, that would be awful. <laughs> Um, yeah, so unless you're making something that you've got a full side of and you can cut that strip first and get your 82 inches, you're going to have to do it in two pieces. Um, and so you want to make sure Correct. that you line up your seams so that just everything is symmetrical because so symmetry is nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my seams are not on the flap. So it's not on the front of the bag. It'll be on the back of the bag. And then whichever piece I have going wherever the seams are at on the back, I want my top piece to be facing downwards, right? So I'm gonna use this to go all the way around the flap and towards the back. And, and then I'm gonna use that gonna go piece under. and it's gonna go under. Correct. So we'll start with that piece. I yeah. know where that one kind of needs to go. And I think I'm just gonna kind of pick the bottom of these strap hangers to start on. We should have plenty of binding strip. I mean, Cynthia, a lot of people hand sew a lot of things. Like this could definitely be hand sewed. Obviously it would take a lot longer, but some of your I mean, some of your, like, most dedicated leather crafters out there are strictly hand sewers. And they hand sew everything from briefcases to whatever. Um, it's, you know, it's a selling point. So if you've got the hours and you have a client that wants to pay you the money, sure, hand sew. But sometimes that's not the case. A lot of times people don't understand the the price, the cost that goes into that kind of a product. Wow, this is, this is, is getting, it sticky? It's getting sticky. It's a sticky situation, y'all. Sticky finger fight here. Back, the back of your head looks great, though. Thank you. I'm okay. Good with job, that. Adam. <laughs> you can either be able to see me make a crappy product or not be able to see me make a decent one. And I'm going to choose. A decent one. And this is why Clayton didn't do the gussets in one piece of leather. <laughs> this right here. Negotiating the corners kind of sucks. Especially this leather is not super stretchy. It does get a lot stretchier as you thin it out. But we're going to have to kind of, we'll revisit these corners and smooth them out. For now you might just have to do some controlled wrinkles. Control wrinkles. I wish we all could control our wrinkles. Mm. <laughs> yes. Chevy guy used a little bit of the gator from the live shopping the other day. That stuff was awesome. Glad you like it. It was very nice. We sold a lot of it. Okay, Dan says, you guys sell hide glue pellets? It says they have an old pot and a bag of pellets that he might try. Hide glue pellets? Yeah. No. We don't sell that. He said it's likely from the early 60s. I mean, I probably I mean, use it, but try it out on something that's not critical. Yeah. when you use it to make sure that it's still good if the product is that old. Adhesive de definitely has like a, a shelf life, I feel like. It's, it's, would you agree, Clayton? I don't know about in pellet form. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Let us know. Good I'm luck. I'm not quite that old, so I don't know what he's talking about for sure. <laughs> Never. All right. Stuck Maybe down. Marvin knows. He brought us some nature tanned leather that was also probably from about the same era when he was here. <laughs> <laughs> A little adhesive over the top of my binding strip on the ends. Oh, this could be great. You feeling good? Feeling so good. <laughs> We'll see. Turn your phone off. Every time. My Every time. Rude. Excuse me. <laughs> just a just a calendar reminder. Oh yeah. That you've got a video. 
No, not even that. <laughs> what time is it? Perfect time. lunch. <laughs> It'll be okay. Did he cut leather with thread nipper? Probably. Mm, yeah, I did <laughs> trim some of my binding with a quick snip. It's like an ounce and a half though. Right? So it's... I if mean, you think about it, they're just like small scissors. <laughs> yeah, I used them for string yesterday. Yeah. yeah, you don't... So I work for thread, <laughs> string, small cord, even leather, fishing line. I guess what they're made for, used for the most probably. Fishing, Fishing line. line. You think? Um. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I do. That's what I said. <laughs> it's just a theory. I don't know. Do you do you have a pair in your fishing gear? Yeah. Are you saying there's more fishermen out there than there are sewing machine operators? Yes, I, I would. You think so? I would be confident in that. Yeah. All the factories that make all of the clothing in the world, you think there are more fishermen than sewing machine operators? Than sewing professional machine sewing machine operators, or just professional any sewing machine operator? Any so I, I mean, I guess I a lot of a lot There's of a lot machines of fishermen now. out there. <laughs> no, there are more people that manufacture clothing than go fishing. I guarantee it. Mm, there are factories full I of people. I wouldn't be so sure. Would not be I so know, sure. I really love your fishing. Did you see this world fishing fair that we had in town the other week? It's, it's a lot of fishermen. Yes, but we all wear clothes. And a lot of us eat fish. <laughs> not caught by those fishermen. Yeah, I thought we were there's like, any There's fishermen. like five, there's probably like five fishermen that catch all the fish in the world that we eat on a mass scale. I don't even think Google can answer this question for you guys. <laughs> That's how you know it's a good question. <laughs> when you can't even turn to Google. <laughs> I think we're just going to have to agree that we don't know. So there's a there's like a, I don't know if it's TikTok or Reddit or whatever, but there's like some competition. Like, are there more doors or wheels in the world? Oh, no. Like, are you on like team doors or wheels? Hmm. And uh, The fact that you told me the other day with Lego makes me feel like wheels. Yeah. What? I, I, I yeah, I do Somebody think that it was sports. wheels. Somebody literally just said that. You were saying that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because you think we have we have we that? have three doors in this room, but all of your stations are on wheels. Exactly. And all of our screens are on wheels. Well, these, these, judging by that evidence, the machines. There's wheels on the table. Uh huh. And bicycles have no doors, but they have two wheels. Two wheels. Okay. <laughs> Twenty wheels. It's a whole it's a whole thing that you guys can look up and watch all of the arguments on doors versus wheels. South door cameras is very controversial and sensitive topic. <laughs> <laughs> but also, did you know that Lego is the largest manufacturer of wheels? What? Yeah. They make the most wheels. Yeah. Tires. Okay. They make they Legos? make the most mm -hmm. I mean they're all teeny tiny, but they make the most. <laughs> that is a thing that Google can probably prove. <clears throat> That's dumb. Michael Seeger ordered the pattern. Woo! Woo woo! Paid well, for the day. Thanks, Mike. My job is done. Let's call it quits. <laughs> You'll never know how to finish it. I'm done. Uh, Liz, you want to assemble some straps for us so yeah. that we can eat today? <laughs> That's not a thing. I don't do that. Second round. I beg the differ. <laughs> I, I have not I have not done well at it though the last few days. I think I actually lost a few pounds. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah. It's probably just kind of rough for you Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's like you fast through lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How do I assemble the straps? Oh look, I could just follow these directions called the the finished ones. Mm. 
pile of button studs I will get from the front of the room. I'm not going anywhere, Loon. Just hold tight. Yep, I'm going to stay here. I talk to my dog. Those of you that have yet to experience that, we have like whole conversations. First time chatters today on Twitch. Yeah. I would say your name, but I don't know how. So, so thanks for joining. I'm glad you like it. So dog asks. Does the glue gum up the needle? No. This stuff, like I said, it's, it's really made to spread very thin, so I try to keep it to a minimum. Um, and so I really don't have any adhesive transfer onto the needles. The only time I've really ran into that, the worst problems I've had is sewing through adhesive back Velcro. That stuff will gum up your needle pretty quick. Um, if you use a lot of basting tape, it can start to stick to it and gum up your needle. If you use too much glue, in general, it will come through. Yes, Dean, the pattern includes all of the leather weights that we talk about for the different parts. Um, but also be aware that depending on the leather that you end up using, you know, could dictate or also allow you to do slightly different weights, um, depending on the temper of the leather that you're using. Yeah, all of the weights noted in the pattern are for using a similar leather like this, very firm bodied, um, you know, a bridle would work. Harness, fetch tan. I think it would be really cool to make one out of our, some of our buffaloes would be really neat. Oh, yeah. All right. So these are the top sides of the straps. And you put the button stud facing towards the finish side in the hole that is not the adjustment hole. And then this will loop through our... Um, rectangle ring on the back and secure with a button stud. So those guys are good. And then these ones we are so the adjustment goes through like this. I got some keepers there for you. Yep. I left one of them unstable. You sure did and I had to go get the stapler because you didn't bring it. But I got it because I saw that we were missing it. I brought that. Nope, it was on the table. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, I got you. These are the really fancy uh, staplers that Kevin bought. They are Neva clogs. Neva clogs. Neva clogs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're still manufactured anymore. I think we had to buy them on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what it is. And. Uh, there's any left on eBay, you could also purchase them. Some Neva clogs. You want to hear a secret? Hmm. I've definitely clogged one of those. <laughs> okay, uh, binder clips. I you have a couple on would thing? like some binder clips. Did I you not bring them? Some. Nope. I think I'm going to need some for this fabric. Help! Binder clips! Andy, Ryan. Quick question. What are we using for glue? For for what? Seriously, guys? Glue, yes. It's another gift. Yeah. Another, yeah? Serious. Serious. Well, one more time. Not using glue at all, actually. It's technically contact cement. But no, we're using our Rinia Aqualim 315. It's just a nice white, pretty well odorless. Yeah, not <laughs> not much to it. Um, but it's a water-based contact cement. It's actually working really well with this waxy, kind of oily harness leather. Uh, works great with veg tan. This stuff bonds to all kinds of stuff. And it is a contact cement. So you'll want to spread it on both surfaces. There are occasions you can stick it when it's wet. Hold it for about 30 seconds and it'll stick pretty well. Um, most of the time I'll go ahead and spread it on and wait till it dries clear or tacks up and then start sticking it all the way around. Hey, look at that. He, he heard. Thanks, Thanks Andy. Andy. Don't let the dog out. Yes, he does have a bit Luna. of a beard. Hey, Luna. You're not allowed to leave. All right, so I'm going to start curling my corners up first. And so I'm just taking care to make sure I don't get any wrinkles on the edge. 
stretching it kind of tight. And this is where, if you did a good glue job on the front, which hopefully we did, you're not going to be pulling it away from your line. Getting that figured out there, Liz? I am. to make another one of these bags for quite a while and so I'm kind of happy to get to do it is that really that all right so on the bottom section of the strap you're going to fold there's four holes in the pattern you're gonna put your two keepers on to one side and then you're folded over you're gonna cinch one keeper um, at the top of the fold and then you'll have your other one free floating between the other two and then you're gonna put your button studs facing towards the side with the keepers. So this one. And this one. And it was my fabric really wasn't very sticky after one coat. It's a really a pretty loose knit. I soaked it right up. Flannel. Yeah, so I'm gonna apply a second coat. Which is pretty common with fabrics. After all the required materials are bought, how much would this bag cost? Cost to make? I mean, depends on the specific materials you buy. I didn't actually figure that out for sure, but total leather, um, about 12, 12 or so square feet is what you're going to need. Um, so if you're doing it out of this harness leather, which we charge around $9 a foot, you know, you're looking at $110 there in leather, and then your hardware together. I'm going to ballpark around 30. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, if you go solid brass, you could be up around 30. Those earth magnets are expensive. The earth magnets are kind of expensive. I know we found a place to get them, you know, four or five bucks a piece. We don't normally sell the neodymium magnets in the one inch square, but you can find them on Amazon for fairly cheap, reasonably priced. So all in, we're talking 150. Plus your time. Plus your time. You should probably value your time. Um, I know this bag that we have here on the on the table, uh, we had in retail for quite a while. And with the spyglass case and a little field note journal to match, um, we had it listed at 600, mm -hmm. which I think you could do better than that online if you wanted to. Um, the screw is not screwing in. It's too short. Well, just do it better. <laughs> I'm gonna maybe go grab one of Denny's French Edgers. You might sky that a bit. Yeah. Or you can. Did you bring a French Edger back? There's one. There is one. Right there. Cool. Do it better. Just do it better. Just smash the leather a little bit. So when I read the bottle, it doesn't need dry time. Hold on. So we'll talk about um, element of vanity. So when I read the bottle already, it says glue doesn't need dry time with a porous material like leather. Notice any difference between when you let it dry versus not. So no, as far as 
the end result of being stuck together, no, you don't have to let it dry. The reason I'm letting it dry right now or tack up is because I'm doing this on an edge binding and I'm putting quite a bit of tension as I fold it over and I want it to be tacky right whenever I stick it down and that way I can keep working my edge all the way around. If you're sticking it when it's wet, you do kind of have to hold it together and press it for a second before it'll actually start to stick. At least that's been my experience. So that's why we're doing that this time. Why staple the keepers versus sew? Staple does not seem too strong. Well, Robert, if, if you want to hand stitch them, you're more than welcome to. It is pretty secure to hand stitch them. But I mean, I can't pull apart these keepers. Um, and also it depends, like these are not exposed keepers. So this true. this strap is folding over and, and being secured like this. So you do not see the back of these keepers. If they were exposed, then we'd probably be more likely to hand sew them because it looks nicer than the staples. Um, but that takes a while and you've got four here. So if you don't have an exposed keeper, kind of what's the point of stapling it? Or what's the point of hand sewing it if it's not gonna be seen? So we do things production style in the shop, which means the quicker the better. So if like you buy keepers from us, we are not gonna hand sew keepers. They will be stapled. That's true. As, yeah. a, as a rule, we, we don't really hand sew anything in the shop. Yeah. But you do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely hand sewn plenty of keepers. Yeah. Especially if the back is gonna be exposed. And they look nice. Big enough keeper you can actually sew it on your sewing machine. Like lap sky it and stitch it, but that's kind of a pain too. Also done riveted keepers. Mm -hmm. Kind of a pain. Clayton has made a lot of fancy keepers. Oh man, it's keepers. Do you need special staples for that Neveclog? Yeah, kinda. Do you have a Neveclog? <laughs> be surprised. Maybe you can find one. Um, so a lot of, in the shop, we used to use a lot of the uh, Arrow P22 staplers. If you're looking for a keeper stapler, um, we, you can just order them off Amazon. They're really not too expensive. And you can buy some of the Universal Arrow staplers or staples. staples for the P22. I think that's what it takes. But they'll, their website will tell you. Oh, wait a minute. So this one goes towards the front and then the other one goes towards the back. Whoops. So the top one at the loop goes towards the front of the strap, and then the other one secures the back side. So I need to get and go the other way. How's it going? It's getting bound tight here. I don't know, it's going to be kind of close on my back, honestly. Once I get to these thicker parts, kind of close. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm going to be a delicate stitching situation. Yeah, we want to make sure that my top stitch is going to hit the back of the binding. So this one folds around and you will secure it at whichever length you choose. And then the other strap will slide through this strap and you will secure it wherever you choose. Salvador asked Liz, is that a tribal tattoo? It is not. It is actually a copy of a leather uh, tooling. But I am a fan of the tribal tattoos. I think they look pretty cool. There's this one guy that I saw yesterday on the internet that had like just half of his body was tribal tattooed, like just right down his spine, and then just one half of his body was tattooed, which I thought was kind of fun. People that do black or whole arm is like black or Oh, yeah. I can't get this over the stud, Clayton. <laughs> oh gosh, this leather is thick. That's okay. Just using 
urban wood plant to compress the leather or something like that? Well, I used the what? French skyver and I, oh, there it goes. I skived the hole, so that, that worked well. There we go. I got it. I got it in there. All right, so that is one strap. That will go over the bottom uh, rectangle ring, and then this side will loop over this way and go over the top rectangle ring. Do it again. That hurt my thumb. Okay, binder clips are nice. I see we lasered some little leather yeah. covers for our binder clips. How cute is so that? So that's fun. All right. Well, we got some, some controlled wrinkles at our corners. Should be fine. They'll look. They'll kind of flatten out as we stitch around them, and then we can go back and hammer them on a granite. And that look pretty good. That looks great. Yeah. So we make sure our binding didn't move too much on the front side. It got glued down well. So we're going to take it to the sewing machine and start stitching around it. <laughs> Picked up some quick snips. <laughs> That's what you deal with when you got magnets in your bag. Um, and so one quick tip, whenever you're stitching around this on your sewing machine, if you've got one, um, or even if you're getting ready to punch it hand stitching, before you just jump on it and start to sew your binding down, you know, usually you're going to want to sew right up next to your edge. Flip it over, run it around your sewing machine, and just eyeball the needle, and make sure that your needle is going to hit your binding on the back side all the way around. And so wherever your binding is the narrowest, that's going to be the limit of your seam allowance. Does that make sense? So you're going to take it over to the machine and you're just going to kind of like drop the presser foot on different areas and make sure that you're right. So in just the right spot. looking at it, I'm going to see if I can find where I think is the narrowest spot of my binding. I'm going to throw that up there and let's see if where I have my roller guide set for a seam allowance, it's going to actually catch the back of it. I might need some more space. So my binding gets pretty narrow on the side down here where the leather's pretty thick. So I kind of want to check and see. If we're going a little bit further. Oh shucks, that was my fun stud. spot down here to see if where I have it set now is gonna is gonna work out. Any room there? I think that's probably about the narrowest we're gonna see. So I am going to try and stitch this guy down and wish me luck. Good luck. I have all the confidence in you. Oh man. You got it. Um, Holly, you might have to move this camera because I am going to move this sewing machine a bit. Thanks for not going to lunch yet. <laughs> it's so tight back here. stitch length by one notch because since we're sewing through some thicker leather it's going to step a little bit shorter.
Well, it looks great. It's not going to come off, but getting it on there is fun. There it goes. Oh my god. You got this. Yeah, this is a big old heavy bag to sew around. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I think he kind of updated how it looked a little bit. And Zima on Twitch was saying how helpful that was. That's awesome. That's what we've got all that information up there. All right, this is the worst part. Ah, it did wrinkle on me. I knew it was going to. So I, it wrinkled just a little bit right here. It got loose on that fabric. It didn't mm. want to stick. Yeah. And I got a weird knot thing going on. But uh, luckily, all of that stuff is fixable. Uh, Nick. Just pull a few stitches. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> so it did, the binding wrinkled on me a little bit as I was going around. And I got a couple of weird knots from my sewing machine made. Um, so... It didn't stick to that fabric very well right there, and I kind of felt it as as I was going around. Uh, but I could pull a couple stitches, pull that back over, and restitch it, and fix those while I'm at it. So not the worst deal in the world. Looks like I hit the binding everywhere else all the way around, which I'm happy about. That's the benefit of hand sewing. And I know it. It, it with this leather, it, it distresses so easily. It's got such a pull up that it looks kind of rough right after you stitch it. Um, you know, these corners are lightened up a whole lot, but once you saddle soap this or, you know, put a little conditioner on it, it really darkens back up and looks nice. What needle were you using for your sewing machine? Uh, I think I've got a 20, 
25 in it. Yes, I believe a 25 diamond point for 207, 138. But there we have it. It is attached together. <clears throat> These gussets will train inward like this, act as a little rain guard so nothing gets in the sides. Our flap will need to be trained down for our front pocket. And this is the part where you want to have definitely made sure you got your magnets right before you get to this top step. <laughs> and it looks like we did. Looks like it's all going to stick properly. Look at that. Yeah. So here's yeah. your straps. Let's go ahead and get some straps on it. So we've got this guy. Now I love this. Folds over. Oh god. Use those muscles, come on. It's not about the muscles. <laughs> you should punch these stud holes from the other way. Maybe. Okay, there we go. There's one on there. And that goes up. So it comes off the shoulder, and then this one's back here. You wanna... Have you ever yeah. used dry erase pens as edge stain? I mean, we've used Sharpie probably as like an edge coloring, but I don't know about dry erase pens. I mean, try it. See if it works. Once again. Oh, button studs. And for this kind of a bag, if you don't use the Sam Brown studs where you're actually setting them on the leather like a like a rivet and burr, I would probably use um, Loctite on these screws to make sure that they the don't first come out. Yeah. <sighs> Work it in there. That hurts my thumbs. Jeez, you should have punched these a little bit. Yeah, they should have been a little bit bigger. But they ain't coming off once they're on there. Or at least, you know, it should be really secure. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Just water that out a little bit. Luna, you don't get to go. Mm. There we go. Now it's really easy. Yeah. Luna. There it is. And time. Okay. And the bag's done, guys. Yeah. Luna, what are you doing? What do you think? There it is. If it'll focus. <sighs> oh, the stitch is a little crooked. And the bag. Look how fun that is. And those, just because this is so stout, those earth magnets really are kind of necessary to make sure that stays in place. Yep. If you had just regular bag magnetic clasp, they probably wouldn't do the trick and it wouldn't hold. It's going to need to train a little bit and break in. But yeah, it'll be a you nice bag. Ready to go exploring. Just in time for your trip. Yeah. Congratulations, I'm Liz. Not taking that to, <laughs> that would be a terrible. Disney World bag. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the worst bag ever I've ever seen. It's, it's so terrible. I mean, it's just real stout. <laughs> so yeah, there's no way I'm taking that anywhere, but I love it. Just not to Disney World, guys. Yeah, Disney World would be a tough time. Yeah. Because you have to take it on and off. Yeah, and it needs to like fit in the ride thing. That's actually yeah, quite comfortable. Such an explorer. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got the tabs in the right spot. The other one, it leans, the bag leans forward a little bit. You gotta make sure you get your strap hanger tabs up high enough on the back. Yeah, this is super comfy, actually. I, I take it back. You're rethinking it. I take it back. I did just buy a new uh, like crossbody bag, though, for Disney, so that's what I'll be going with. <laughs> that is canvas, because water. Can you take the spyglass at least? And carry it around. And carry it around. It it's actually has a. View at Disney. <clears throat> it has a belt loop right here. You can put it on your belt. I don't and intend carry it around on at Disney. wearing a belt at Disney. It's gonna oh be in gosh, comfy is that clothes. Right over there. 
<laughs> Is that Mickey that I see? Wow, Splash Mountain. Flying glass case out. Yeah, this is pretty comfy. Good job. Good, good job. Alrighty, folks. Well, that is the Explorer backpack three hours later and only slight adhesive mishaps in section one. So things went well today. Good job. Watch the whole video before you attempt the backpack. I'll yeah. Just, let's just do that. As always, read all instructions before proceeding. That's rule number one for Absolutely. anything. Absolutely. For sure. Alrighty. Yep, that's what we got. You all have a great weekend. Go exploring, catch some fish, do fun things. Yeah. And uh, they will see you next week with something. Oh, yes. We're going to do something very cool next week. <laughs> Absolutely. And everybody give Ryan a really hard time since I'm not here to do it. We've got, been so. working on some outdoor dining patterns. We might test out one of those on camera. Ooh. See how that goes. You better get me all this stuff before we start. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Make up your mind right now. <laughs> Alrighty, and I believe that Chad and Holly are going to do some painting for our Twitch after party. So if y'all want to stick around and just hang out and chill, um, they are going to be doing some stuff, hanging out with you for a little bit, doing some trading cards. So everybody have a great weekend, and we will see you next week. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, it is nice. I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> put, put this one on.